Hello everyone and welcome to the video you've all been waiting for and the news you've all been waiting for. Uh, it's a great day for chess, it's a great day for India, but especially it's a great day for uh, Grandmaster Ramesh Babu Pragnananda. Now, uh, as you all know, uh, you know, it's been all over the news ever since uh, like like last year, will he become the youngest Grandmaster in the world? And uh, although he, he didn't become the youngest Grandmaster in chess history, he did become uh, the second youngest Grandmaster in chess history and also he's the current youngest Grandmaster master today. So, uh, as you remember, uh, in 2017, uh, Prago won his first Grandmaster Norm in the World Junior Championship uh, in Tarvisio, Italy. Uh, then his second uh, Grandmaster Norm he won this year uh, in the Heraklion Fisher Memorial uh, Tournament in Greece. And now uh, in Gradin, uh, uh, Italy, in uh, uh, in Ortese, after eight rounds that have been played in this very strong tournament, uh, he uh, has six and a half points and he is tied in first place before the last round uh, with uh, Croatian Grandmaster Ivan Šarić. So uh, this is one of the games uh, played uh, in this tournament. Uh, he faces the very strong and talented uh, Ir Iranian international master Arian Golami and uh, it's a very nice game. I'm sure you're going to enjoy it, so let's check it out. So Prago has the white pieces and he opens with knight to f3. Uh, the ready opening. We have knight to f6 and now c4. Uh, also, uh, Prago does enjoy the, the king's Indian attack with the g3, but in this game he decided he decided to go for something different. So c4, uh, we have b6, g3, bishop to b7, <coughs> uh, bishop g2, g6, uh, d4, bishop to g7, we have castles, castles, uh, and now d5. Uh, also possible is knight to c3, but then black can immediately go for some uh, for some exchanges, and uh, white uh, wants to keep all the advantage. So uh, first d5, grabbing more space and not allowing black any exchanges. Uh, we have knight to e4, and now knight f to d2, also creating a, a very nice position. And here, uh, avoiding the exchange, now uh, Golami goes for knight to c5, and here uh, it's a uh, it's a completely new game, not available in 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 the database. Uh, we have knight to b3, and now comes a5, and knight to c3. Uh, also, knight cap captures, captures, and queen b3 is very nice, uh, going for the bishop, developing the queen, but after rook to a7, uh, it's not it's not all that clear, can white push for any advantage here, and uh, Prago keeps everything on the board, no, not forcing every, anything. So, knight to c3, we have d6, uh, and now knight to d4. Uh, queen to d7 and now e4, e5 and knight comes to b5. So as you can see, uh, both uh, both Prago and Golami are very interested in a good fight. And none of the pieces have been exchanged, and uh, all of the pawns are still on the board. Uh, so we have knight b to a6, uh, a3, uh, a f5, and now f3. Uh, e captures on f5 with g captures on f5 would also have been possible and in fact it's very nice for white uh, but uh, maybe black would uh, would get a bit too much here as black can now start pushing his pawns and if he can figure out what to do with this knight and bishop then black will also be fine but Prago uh, still tries to keep everything intact uh, we have f3 but now f captures on, uh, on e4 f captures on e4 uh, rook captures on f1 and now king captures on f1 and here Probably rook to f8 check followed the uh, followed with king to g1 is probably the best way to go bringing the rook uh, uh, in the game uh, with a tempo. Uh, but here after king captures on f1 we have c6 uh, and okay we have d captures bishop captures and now Prago goes for king to g1. Uh, here it seems like black uh, lo black loses a pawn here but the immediate queen captures on d6 would actually lose the game for Prago. So he, he he avoids this because of rook to f8 check now. Uh, we have king to king to g1 and now bishop captures on b5. Knight captures, queen captures, knight captures and now comes uh, the star move. Knight to b3 going for the rook. Uh, if you avoid this, rook to b1, then comes rook to d8. Uh, what do you do with the knight? Uh, after you move the knight, you get rook to d1 check, bishop blocks and now rook captures and you've just lost a piece. So uh, grabbing the pawn immediately would uh, lose the game for Prague immediately. So king to g1 and uh, here the d6 pawn, it's a backwards pawn and it's a weak pawn. So Prague doesn't uh, mind, he's gonna capture it uh, either way. Uh, knight to c7, now comes bishop to e3, uh, knight 7 to e6, we have b4 now, a captures, a captures and now knight to a6. Exchanging rooks doesn't really do all that much for black either. 
So knight to a6, and now comes knight to d5. And here black is black is in such a terrible position that there really isn't all that much to do. You cannot capture and win a pawn here as uh, knight captures on b6 would would immediately win you the game. The queen is attacked, the rook is attacked. Uh, wherever you move, a captures here, your rook is still attacked, the knight is hanging, the, the knight is pinned. So a very hard position for black. Here, uh, Golami tries knight a to c7. Uh, and here we have knight b captures on c7. Uh, rook captures on a8 uh, is, is the best move, uh, and now bishop to h3 simply de destroys black's position. Uh, but uh, Prago uh, evaluates the position correctly, and he, he finds that knight b captures on c7 is also completely winning. Uh, because now you get rook captures, queen captures, knight captures on c7. Uh, knight, uh, bishop captures on b6, knight captures here, e captures on d5, and after bishop moves, uh, now comes b5. So, uh, what, what can you do here? You have to move the bishop, of course, the bishop is under attack. Bishop c2, and now comes queen to a8 with check. King, uh, bishop blocks, and now bishop to e3. Simply uh, bringing the bishop over here, uh, so it can help defend the white king, and now you simply create room for this pawn to march forward. There is no stopping the b-pawn, so black has to do something drastically, but there isn't all that much to do. Uh, Golami tries queen to g4, maybe queen to d1 can bring him some uh, ideas of a perpetual. Uh, so first h3, making room for the king on h2, and now there is really nothing here. Uh, queen to d1, check. I if you grab the pawn, uh, you lose immediately. Then bishop to h6, there is no defense against queen captures on, uh, on f8. Uh, so after h3, we have queen d1, check, king moves, and now king to f7. You can't allow bishop to h6 uh, to tie down the bishop on f8. Uh, queen b7 check, we have king to f6, uh, queen to c8, now going of course here for queen to e6, uh, king back to g7, and now comes without further ado, bishop to h6 check, and uh, it was in this position that uh, Iranian international master Aryan Golami resigned the game. Uh, what would follow is king captures, queen captures, and now it, regardless of wh where you go with the king, you're gonna lose the game h4, now comes king g4. If you go king h5, bishop f3 wins the queen. So king here and now queen to h6, and there is no defense against queen to g5 checkmate. There are no checks, there are no threats, there are no tricks here, so uh, it would be pointless to, to even try anything here. Uh, whatever black plays, queen g5 on the next move will be checkmate. Uh, but after bishop to h6, uh, the game continued no longer, and this is move 35. So, uh, yeah, a very nice game against, uh, I believe, uh, Golam is almost 2500 rated, so I believe 2490. So, you know, uh, winning a game in 35 moves against such a strong player, uh, definitely deserving, deserving of his <laughs> third Grandmaster norm. Uh, but yeah. Uh, that was the game and I do hope you enjoyed it and here uh, I prepared uh, these are the standings after eight rounds uh, of the of the tournament uh, here we have uh, Pragnananda is tied with Ivan Charic of Croatia uh, with for in first place with six and a half points and then all the other players to follow so that's quite an achievement as uh, Charic uh, Sharic is the top seed in this tournament and uh, Sharic is the reigning champion of Croatia but also the reigning European champion so uh, quite, quite an achievement uh, and also here uh, we have uh, who are the youngest grandmasters in history uh, as of as of now so uh, although uh, Pragnananda did not break Karakin's record here you can see that Sergei, Ka Sergei Karakin uh, won his uh, grandmaster title at the year at 12 years and seven months. Then Pragnananda is now in second place with 12 years and 10 months. Then Nodirbek uh, Abdul Satorov of Uzbekistan, 13 years and one month. Uh, Parimarian Negi of India, 13 years and four months. And Magnus Carlsen in fifth place now uh, at 13 years and four months. So very nice, very nice standings, and uh, you can see that out of the five youngest grandmasters in history, <clears throat> India now claims two of them. So maybe, you know, maybe announcing a shift of power in the future. And also, uh, it was a very joyous day. Uh, of course, uh, it all happened yesterday. So, you know, uh, congratulations were pouring in from all over the world, world all, all over the uh, media portals, the social networks. And you can see that uh, even former world champion and uh, reigning rapid world champion Vishwanathan Anand also joined in the congratulations. So, yeah. Uh, that's basically it. Uh, once again, uh, huge congratulations to to, to Young Prago, and uh, you know, 
achieving such such greatness at such a young age, uh, it seems that only sky is the limit for for the young boy from Chennai. So yeah. Uh, that's it for this video. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon. Uh, maybe, maybe even I will create a poll for my next series, so we can check out where to go from here. So thank you all, and I'll see you soon.